Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry video. In this video, I'm going to talk about alloys. I'm going to discuss what alloys are structurally, some of their key properties, and also some of their fundamental uses as well. So you're probably aware from a knowledge of history that human societies have been utilizing alloys for thousands of years. I'm going to explain exactly how alloys work, starting with how pure metals are generally softer than alloys and the reasons behind that. So, the structure you can see in front of you here is that of a pure metal. This is a giant metallic structure, a regular lattice structure of metal cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. There are strong metallic bonds throughout the structure. Metallic bonds are strong electrostatic force of attraction between positive metal cations and the surrounding negatively charged delocalized electrons. Now, you may also notice that in this pure metal, metal cations are the same sizes as each other. They're also arranged in a regular arrangement of layers of cations. That means that the layers of cations can easily slide over each other without breaking the strong metallic bonds that are holding the structure together. This is what makes metals both malleable and ductile meaning that pure metals can be easily molded and bent into new shapes without breaking or snapping, unlike other brittle structures which snap under shearing forces. Now, imagine you wanted to take our metal and use it to make a sword. Now, unfortunately, the malleable and bendy nature of the metallic structure is not going to be suited to that particular utility or purpose. Imagine two swords clattering together and instantly bending around each other. The two weapons are now effectively useless. That's where alloying comes in. If we melt down our pure metal, and whilst it's molten, add in a different element, often another metal, or maybe a non-metal like carbon, that alteration of its structure upon cooling and solidifying will create a harder substance, a harder structure, which will be much better suited to use in a weapon like a sword. So that's what I'm going to take you guys through now. Have a look at this alloy structure, very different to our pure metal. This is a representation of mild steel. The metal cations in this example are iron cations and the checkered circles represent carbon atoms. Those carbon atoms were introduced to the molten metal and have remained in position once it has solidified and they are massively disrupting the regular arrangement of the metal cations. So what we find is in alloys, in alloys, sorry, different sized atoms or metal cations will disrupt the regular arrangement of that lattice structure. The layers of metal cations will find it much harder to slide over each other easily and that will create a harder and more rigid structure. So mild steel, while still being reasonably malleable, will be harder and more rigid when compared against soft, pure iron. This alloy is an example of what is known as an interstitial alloy because the carbon atoms we've introduced are sitting in gaps between the metal cations within the lattice structure. This is one of two main types of alloy you may come across. The other type of alloy you may come across are known as substitutional alloys. These are alloys in which certain ions in the pure metal structure have been replaced by metal ions of a different element. In this case, my slightly more gold colored elements here and here. Usually the metal ions involved are of a similar size to those of the pure metal, but slightly different in size. And so again, the key factor is that with these alloys as well, there is that fact that the cations that have been introduced have a different size to the pure metal cations. This is still disrupting the regular arrangement of those metal cations in the structure and the layers of metal cations will again find it harder to slide over each other due to that disruptive nature of the different size atoms inside this lattice structure. Just before I move on to talk about the uses of alloys and how their properties are suited to those uses, please don't forget, if you are finding this video useful, think about giving it a like, maybe think about subscribing to the wider channel or even ring the bell to be notified of our latest content. You can even share this content with 
others who are finding chemistry difficult. Um, my main objective with this channel is to spread the word of chemistry as widely as possible and help everybody uh, learn more about the subject. So your support is always hugely appreciated. And let's crack on to talk about some special properties of alloys. So it turns out that alloys are all around us in the modern world, and some of them are really, really useful. The first one I'll talk about is known as cupronickel. It's an alloy of copper and nickel, and it's found in our coins. The reason we use cupronickel is that it's harder than both the pure metals, which are softer than cupronickel as the alloy. It's relatively cheap. Uh, it's lustrous, therefore it's very shiny and attractive. It's corrosion resistant, which is vital for coins that are gonna be in service for a long time. And incredibly, it has some level of antimicrobial and antibacterial property. So a really useful attribute for coins that will pass through many hands to not build up bacteria on the surface too much. The next alloy I wanna talk about is the humble stainless steel fork. So stainless steel is an alloy of iron, carbon to a smaller extent, and most importantly of all, chromium. So stainless steel is slightly harder than mild steel, making it good for making cutlery because it's quite rigid. But more importantly, and this is sounding quite weird, what is the flavor of a stainless steel fork? When we taste it, it tastes like nothing at all. And that's all down to the chromium. It's corrosion resistant and flavorless because the chromium content creates a chromium oxide invisible and transparent layer around the outside of this fork. And even when it's scratched, it instantly reformed that chromium oxide transparent protective layer when it reacts with oxygen directly. So the reason why you can't taste that bitter metallic flavor of the fork itself is because an invisible layer of chromium oxide is protecting the metal and therefore you're not you're tasting the chromium oxide which has no flavor and not the metallic surface itself. Finally, an alloy which is synonymous with an entire age of human civilization, bronze. So bronze is an alloy of tin and copper, tin and copper both being soft metals. Now before the Bronze Age, which began approximately 3300 BC, humans were using stone and flint tools. They can be made to be very sharp, but they flake and break easily. They're relatively brittle materials. On the other hand, once we were producing the alloy bronze through melting and mixing of tin and copper together, we could make weapons and tools that were much more hard wearing, much more resistant to damage, and societies such as the Greeks put these weapons to great use, fighting each other and conquering other lands and these weapons can still be found in archaeological digs to this day. So they are very resilient materials. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to the end. Hugely appreciate that. I hope you found that lesson useful and illuminating. As I spin my Cooper Nickel coin, I wish you the very best. Take care. And bye now.